guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm going to finally be doing a review of Shatter Me by Tahira Mafi. Now, if you don't know what this book is about, it is about this girl named Juliet whose touch can kill people. People want to use her as a weapon. I gave this book three stars. I thought it was pretty good. There were quite a few issues. Like, this book is, like, heavy on insta-love, so if you don't like insta-love, maybe not pick this up but it was a really quick read and like once you get through like the first 50 to 100 pages it's like addicting to read and also the writing style is beautiful it's pretty poetic and I personally really love that and it also has crossing out of things that she is thinking but she knows she shouldn't. If you haven't read this book, I would probably close out of this video because I am going to be getting into very detailed spoilers. If you're still interested in seeing my thoughts on this book and you've read it, just stay tuned for about two seconds. <laughs> okay. This book. I read this book four years ago. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I literally even have how many words it has in it because when I read this we had to read 1 million words by the end of the year. So if you ever wanted to know, there's about 100,949 words in Shatter Me. So while I was reading this I actually took notes in this gorgeous notebook that I have. First off, Juliet. Let's talk about Juliet. She is so weak. And I completely understand that because she's been in that like treatment center slash asylum for years and she's not fed well. She hasn't been able to exercise or anything. And plus she's probably scared to death after like everything that she can do because she literally killed a child with by just touching them because she was trying to help them. Then you have her randomly getting like a surge of confidence and like telling people, oh hell no you're not doing that or telling them off like she told Warner off many times and then she told like some other people off and I'm like okay and then she, immediately after she'll go back to being like this like traumatized girl I don't know she seemed to be getting some ups and downs throughout the book also I don't get why people like Warner Especially after all the things he did in this book. Like, I really don't. And maybe that's just because I've only read the first book, but I read this twice. I used to be Team Adam. Now I don't like him. <laughs> so I think Warner has, like, a very interesting character who has a lot of mother issues, apparently. He literally sent one of his soldiers to go, like, touch Juliet when he clearly knows that she can kill anyone with her touch, which is why he wanted her in the first place. Later on, he trapped her in a room with a child and she couldn't get the child out without carrying the child. And he just sat there and watched and set this whole thing up, which was basically her killing the child. Then she got these like weird ass powers that was like, let's go crash into the cement wall and kill Warner. So now she can crash into cement walls and break them. Okay. <laughs> Warner is so obsessed with her and he like treats her like an object which I am not a fan of at all. So does Adam though. In one part it was Adam and Warner fighting back and forth and was like she belongs to me. No she belongs to me. I was like she belongs to herself, not one of you two. Juliet described Warner as possessive is not a strong enough word for Warner, which is so true. He is so possessive of her. And then he just shot someone without hesitation. Let's talk about Adam. That was insta-love. So they knew each other when they were children. Adam was like all saying like, oh, I've had a crush on you since we were children and you never really scared me even though you can literally touch someone and kill them even though they never really even talked and he's like i've loved you all these years okay bud no <laughs> let's not go that far all of a sudden they're in love let's declare our love to the world let's be on each other the entire book and then all of a sudden he can touch her hmm pretty convenient don't you think literally even james says that let's find the quote <laughs> so it's between adam and james and adam says she can't then james says except for you right except for me she can't touch anyone except for you right 
That seems awfully convenient, James narrows his eyes. Exactly what I was thinking. So now we're probably gonna get a love triangle somewhere down the line. And then there's always these people who are like, oh, Team Warner or Team Adam, which mostly people are Team Warner. After this book, I don't really understand why, but maybe my views were changed, even though it didn't make a very good impression on me in this book. Now we should talk about the light at the end of the tunnel, Kenji. I love Kenji. He made everything more lighthearted, and without him, I don't think I would enjoy this book as much. We still don't really know much about him, except now he can, like, blend in with his surroundings, which is really cool, and I would love that. He added a sense of humor and lightness to the story, which already this is like a pretty heavy topic since it's like set in a dystopian world. We're dealing with a girl who can kill people with just touching them and she's very traumatized. Also another character that I really like is James even though we didn't get much of him, which is really sad. The one thing I did like about Adam is how much he cares for James, and I think that translated very well. And just James, after he said that one comment about it being convenient, I related to him. He was the best. I loved him. He's so excited. He literally, even, he's like not afraid of Juliet, and he like even like made like a little joke about it. Another light at the end of the tunnel that if he wasn't there, I probably wouldn't like this book as much. <laughs> he gets to see more, but honestly, I feel like he's gonna die because that like always happens in books. Okay, now let's talk about the ending. So now there's multiple people with powers, like that one guy who can like electrocute people and then Kenji has a power. So then we meet this guy named Castle who is like the leader of Omega Point. Oh, one thing I really respected about Juliet during one of these scenes towards the end of the book at Omega Point was that there was that stupid guy, what's his name? Winston, Winston. <sighs> Let me read you an excerpt. I take a deep breath. So what's motto mean? Winston rolled his eyes. Nothing, it's just a nickname. His last name is Kishimoto. It's either moto or motto. Motto? I don't know, excuse me for pronouncing this wrong. He gets mad when we chop it in half, gets sensitive about it. Well, why do you chop it in half? He snorts. Because it's hard as hell to pronounce. How is that an excuse? He frowns, what? You got mad when I called you Blondie and not Winston. Why does he have the right to be mad that you're calling him Moto instead of Kenji? He mumbles something that sounds like it's not the same thing. I slide down a little, rest my head on the pillow. Don't be a hypocrite. Yes! I was so happy when she said that because that is exactly what I was thinking. Like, yes, for standing up to Winston when he shouldn't have been like that. He was really annoying. Though I didn't like him either. Julia was annoying throughout the book, but she did redeemable parts like that one scene. Another convenience is that Adam and Juliet have had the same dream about a bird. What does this bird even mean? He Adam got it tattooed on his chest and then that's like when you find out like, oh, they've Juliet and Adam have had the same dream. Just watch Warner have this same dream. Like, what does this bird represent? What is this bird? I hope we find out later on and she doesn't just like ditch the whole idea. Maybe it's because Adam's immune. Is that his power? And everyone who has powers dreams the same bird. I literally have no idea and it was only brought up like once. Okay! <laughs> oh, she has a thing of repeating herself a lot. Once you get more into the book she doesn't really do that as much but like she also says I want to be angry angry angry. I want to be the bird that flies away. It's not him not him not him not him not him not him. I really hope this gets better over time and I know this is just like me like bashing the book and everything but there were some like redeemable things like with Juliet like she was annoying a lot of the time but she did have some scenes where I was like heck yes you go girl. I love the relationship with Adam and James. I loved Kenji. I like the mysterious, like the more mysterious ending because you still don't really know much about Omega Point, which I hope she explores a lot more in the other books. 
because you basically just see her in the hospital of Omega Point and Adam's all about to die. <laughs> I hope we also get some more backstory on Juliet's like past, like more of it. Because like, yeah, we learned about her and Adam and we learned that like, they didn't want to take care of her or whatever, but I want to learn more. Also, Adam like being immune and Warner being immune. I have a feeling that the whole radioactive ground that Warner sent Adam to and brought samples back helped them become immune because Adam kept going there. I think that is it for my review. If I think of anything else, I'll probably just add it in the description box and maybe on my Goodreads. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and it, tell me if you thought any of the same things that I did and if I should continue on with the series because I plan on it. We'll see. I think I'm gonna read Unravel Me right now and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs> so much more to say but I've never done a review before so this was kind of a mess so I apologize for that I just I've always wanted to do reviews but I never really know what to say even though like I have like a ton of stuff of my reactions like written down 